So let's go right back to the beginning at this point. And uh, what's the shape of the Earth? The Earth is round, you say. Everybody knows the Earth is a sphere. How do you know the Earth is a sphere? Well, your kindergarten teacher told you the Earth was a sphere, and you believed everything she said, and you still believe the Earth is a sphere, right? Stand out on the Great Plains sometime and look off into the distance. It sure looks flat, flat as can be, far as you can see, out to a horizon, where if you go far enough, clearly you will fall off the edge. But you know that's not true. You drive along the highway, you look out to the horizon where the sky seems to come down to meet the land, and you can't get there. You don't go off a cliff where there's a big pile of cars down there at the bottom. You can never get to the horizon. As you walk, as you drive, it recedes in front of you. That was known to the ancients. You go back a couple of thousand years. This was one of the first tips that the Earth is really round, or at least it's curved. What else? As you move along the surface of the Earth, the stars appear to move in the other direction. Uh, there's a reflection in the motion. Uh, one of the themes that we have over the next couple of lectures especially is that as you move one way, everything in the sky appears to move the other way. I don't think there's anybody who hasn't had the experience of driving. You're parked at a, uh, at a red light and there's another car next to you and your foot's on the brake and gradually the car next to you starts to move up a little bit and you feel oh my goodness, I'm moving backwards, you stop harder and harder on the brake, and it does no good at all. Reflexive motion. If something moves this way, you appear to move this, the other direction. You're driving off into the country, you're going this way, the cows are going in the other direction. It's exactly the same thing with the earth. As you move one way, things in the sky appear to move in the other way. So as you are walking this way, and if I were to walk this way, the ceiling would appear to move this way. But if you're walking on a flat earth or on a round earth, the motion is different. If you're walking on a round earth, the motion is extremely smooth, in the opposite direction. That was known to the ancients as well. The Earth must be curved in some way or another. The real tip-off, however, came with eclipses of the Moon. Commonly confused with the phases of the Moon. We'll talk all about this in a later course. I have a Sun. I have an Earth. I have a Moon. Shine the flashlight on the Earth. I'm illuminating this hemisphere of the Earth. But the Earth is casting a shadow into space. The moon is on the other side of the earth over here. If the moon goes in back of the earth this way, it goes into the shadow of the earth and disappears. Eh, it doesn't entirely disappear, but it gets very, very dark for a period of time. The earth must cast a circular shadow into space. As the moon goes around the earth in back here and loses its source of sunlight, its illumination, the outline of the Earth is projected onto the Moon as a circle. This was known to Aristotle. No matter what the configuration of the eclipse, how the Moon goes in back of the Earth, the shadow is always a circle. Therefore, the Earth must present a circular outline, and no matter in which direction the Moon appears, the Earth always has a circular outline, and the only body whose outline is always a circle is a sphere. We've known this for 2,000 years. How big is it? Well, even that we have known since the 3rd century B.C. A man named Eratosthenes, over 2,000 years ago, who lived in Alexandria in Greece, right here. And he knew that down here in what we now know as the Sudan, there was a town where on the first day of summer, the sun shone directly overhead like this. Went right down to the bottom of a well. But he knew where he was up here in Alexandria that that never happened. On the first day of summer, the sun was a 50th of a circle off the overhead point. Well, if from, in going from, from the Sudan and this, this place in, in Egypt up to Alexandria, far to the north, you move the sun by a 50th of a circle, the circumference of the earth must be 50 times that distance between the two points. Just multiply one by number by another. We don't know how big the, the, the Greek system of, of units, of measurement units were, but the best we know, uh, Eratosthenes had it right to within about 10% or so. They have no, we have known for over 2,000 years that the Earth is a sphere and how big it is. Columbus knew that the Earth was a sphere. Maybe the, 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 the crewmen didn't know, but anybody who was educated knew the Earth was a sphere. They had the wrong size by that point, but that's sort of irrelevant. They knew they could go all the way around and come back to the beginning. And then, of course, Magellan demonstrated it again by going all the way around. And now we can take pictures from space, and we see the Earth actually turning, rotating around, 
always presenting its circular outline. There's obviously no doubt at all that the Earth is a sphere. The proof is there. This illustrates an interesting point about science. The idea that the Earth is a sphere is a theory. It's a model of what we see. This is how science actually works. We take a lot of data. We construct some kind of modeling theory. And that, in principle, allows us to predict new observations we can make. And if all of these new observations support the idea, then the theory is probably correct.